2 Mega Pops is an achievement in Balloon's Tower Defense 6. We need to get 2 million or more pops with a single tower throughout the game. We decided to go full auto in the scrapyard. I would say for the first few rounds, go on strong so that you'll be able to either pop or slow down the balloons as much as you can. Because these red balloons, despite the fact that they are further along the track, are slower than the other balloons. So therefore, we need to try and prioritize the stronger balloons first rather than always the frontmost balloons. Probably round eight, deal with the blue balloons once we get the green balloons down to reds. And once you are able to, get even faster firing. Can we do the rest of this round? I hope so. We've got the money for even faster firing. And ooh, one of those was tipping towards the edge of the map there. Now it's time for some speed control. Put down our glue gunner, and I would say put it down on last when it comes to targeting priority, because it means you'll be able to slow down these backmost balloons even more, which will mean that the sniper will be able to handle with the frontmost strongest balloons. Let's ensure that the glue itself doesn't last for a few seconds, but quite a while, with some stickier glue. I'm just gonna leave it at that though, don't need bigger globs for the time being. Night vision, and as soon as you're able to afford it, shrapnel shot as well. Yes, go with the middle path, cross path when it comes to full auto, because number one, we get that bonus camo damage, and number two, shrapnel shot is very good against hordes. It enables us to also deal bonus damage to the balloons which are going to be behind the ones in which we're going to intentionally target anyway. So if you try and hit the frontmost one, then some of the ones at the very back or by the sides of it, depending on where they are, will receive additional damage. Do you know what's better than one glue gunner? Two glue gunners. This one's going to be relentless and this one will at some point be glue storm. Let's put down Geraldo, but we've got to be very careful as to where we're going to put him down. Because I don't want Geraldo to be able to pop any Moabs which are over here. But at the same time, I... Uh, there's still the matter of Moab class balloons over here as well, which Geraldo might be able to reach. Because remember, at level 3, Geraldo's attack range increases, which is good for most scenarios, but bad when it comes to being able to support a 2 Mega Pops means. Unless, of course, Geraldo is the tower itself, which you're going to get the 2 Mega Pops with. Oh yeah, we defeated them round 21. It's pickles time. Let's see if this is going to be able to enable us to get over the finish line here. Put you on strong so that you're always trying to stick to the pink balloons. Thank you very much because they're the biggest threat at the moment. The pink balloon. Ooh. Yeah, this one's going to be tougher than I think. Didn't have any trouble in my test game, so what gives? Put the sniper back on strong and see how it performs, but unfortunately, these frontmost balloons are going to be a bit of a havoc if we don't deal with those first, so... Yeah, yellow balloons and pink balloons are a bit of a havoc here. Come on, please. Come on, there's too many pink balloons on this round. Bigger globs? Is that what's going to get us over to the finish line, please? If we can stick two rather than one? Oh, uh, pay for anything at this point, for goodness sakes, because this is really annoying me. But that seems to be doing the trick. There's still so many pink balloons, though. Nah, the bigger globs were the thing that I needed. Camo balloons? No problem. We have innate camo detection with our middle cross path, soon to be full auto sniper rifle. Hmm, multiple balloons to try and deal with simultaneously. And also, the next round is going to present to us with a lead issue, which we'll be handling with by purchasing a mortar monkey. But first, let's try and handle this round. Hopefully, let's go back to first. Are we going to need pickles? Pickles? Uh, pickles is needed. What I've learned with a mortar monkey is that you can just put it in a stupid spot like this, where normally it'd be a horrible spot to put a supporting tower on when it comes to two mega pops for another tower. But with a mortar, you can select where it's going to target, and then you can just leave it there for the rest of the game. Once you, well, so once this use is now used up, rest of round 27. Oh, yellow balloons. Will sharpening stone help us out? Yeah, I think Sharpening Stone's done the trick. It enables the shrapnel to go through more balloons, which is nice. 
And legs, and I forgot to put down our wonderful friend, the Mortar Monkey. There we go. Let us do that. Come on, pop him, please. There we go. And once he's able to pop all the legs, just put it back into a spot where it won't be able to affect any balloons. And then your Mortar Monkey will have no issues with popping other balloons. Another set of leads, another set of shells to decimate them. The earlier you can pop the leads, the more likely it is it's not going to steal other pops away from your um, from your two mega pops intended tower. So let's say, for example, this lead, let's just leave it so that it doesn't try and pop those pinks. Because we want the pinks and the rest to be popped by our full auto sniper soon to be. Let's go semi-auto next. Oh, uh, regrows, my favorite things in the whole wide... Oh, glad I was able to deal with all that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to think if we couldn't deal with all of those, that the restart of a round. Not only does Pickles affect the, um, the bullet itself, it also affects the shrapnel, which is good. <gasps> You've got to be kidding me. Where was the shrapnel in that shot? But then again, if it targeted the backmost green, then that would have been a non-issue. Can we succeed this time? I think we can. I'm not too sure I did differently. Aside to change this to strong. So it's always sticking to the blacks and whites and purples. Full auto time. Full, I mean semi auto time. <laughs> yeah, we will fully get the full auto. But we just don't have the money for it yet. I spoke too soon. Scrapyard is one of those maps where there's just no absolute safe spot to put a supporting tower down. And it won't get pops intentionally or unintentionally. Like, put it behind the crusher can only stop you from being able to attack from this point here. But these two circles here and here. Um, yeah, Gerardo is still able to pop Moabs on both sides. Oh, we've got more layers to deal with. No problem. Let us deal with those by using the mortar. And I think one more should do it. And there we go. That deals with the leads. Ah, we don't have any pickles on this. Let's try and hold out as long as we can so we can get full auto rifle. And now we've got full auto action. <laughs> this time around, it took two turns to say full auto correctly. Because the first time was semi-auto. Really? There's still a lead left? Fine. I guess we have to deal with that. Put you back in the corner where you belong, you naughty mortar. Can we get jungle drums by the end of this round? No. Weird, because I was able to get jungle drums on one of my test games, but... Badass, I guess we'd be spending more money on our glue gunners and Gerardo items, because, because for some odd reason, when I go to a quarter session, somehow I have less power in order to be able to consistently do things. Jerry's fire, and to be honest, I'm just going to stick with Jerry's fire for the time being, so that I have some means of... Getting leads, but we're very close to the MIB. Now that we have the MIB, our next target is to get ourselves a wonderful, wonderful, um, overclock engineer down. But I'm wondering if this, yeah, I think we've got our angles covered here. This won't be able to target any Moab class balloons down here, although because of Geraldo's behavior for me sometimes and his ability just to be able to see through walls and pop balloons through walls, um, I'm not going to hold out against the engineer also being able to do the same thing as well considering my luck with this game. Moabs go down like that. And thanks to the MIB, we no longer have a lead issue with the sniper itself and not just solely relying on either the mortar or Jerry's fire to be able to pop leads. And also, because of the fact that the Jewish Fire is under an MIB, it can, by itself, pop purples. I'm starting to think that the bottom right end of a ZMG may still be able to be targeted by the Engineer from this angle. And it's still able to hit Moabs over here. It's about just fantastic when it can hit something outside of its range. <laughs> but this Crusher is just definitely the only viable spot in order to shield uh, supporting towers from being able to attack balloons. But it's still not the best place when it comes to the overall game and also high towers behind. Oh, overclock, lovely. Uh, come on, game. Be in my favor, please. Or not. You know, you could just be on your own for this matter. Still don't need the better glues at this given point in time. 
Although I do think at some point we're going to need the, um, the blue strike and then save glue storm for like the late 90s. Camo lids, absolute no problem. Also for the fact that you do have the camo status, our night visual goals will be able to do additional damage to camos, which is an additional bonus for going down the middle path rather than the top path. I just don't think the top path is viable. While yes, you do extra bullet damage, you don't have that shrapnel. So I think that the best cross path could ever be is a 224 auto full auto rifle size. So a 224 full auto rifle, but that's cheating because you can only have one cross path and not a double one. This is not a mod. Round 63 is going very smooth. Glue strike anytime a fresh horde of these ceramics comes out. Let's see, there we go. Uh, we don't have pickles, which is why we're kind of struggling against these ceramics. If we had pickles on, then uh, there would be a bit more of a... Well, it'll take less time for them to go down, honestly. It says it has incredible popping power. But you just have incredible uh, shooting speed. I'm not too sure on the overall damage of the full auto rifle, but I presume that it has the same per bullet damage as the semi-auto. It's just the fact that it fires much faster, which is where its power lies in. Not per bullet, but how many bullets can it fly out? That's where the strength of Sun Towers lies. Not per bullet, <laughs> but the amount of them that it can chuck out. It's like they're saying if you throw enough stuff at a wall, some of it will stick. If you throw enough stuff at the balloons, it will eventually disappear. Our next target now is a call to arms to be able to get that brief moment where our attack speed and pierce increases by 50%. It is the most balloon popping time of the year. Ding dong, ding dong. I know I'm out of sync, but I don't want a copyright strike from the original song, so that's why I'm kind of seeing it like this. But you say if you have a jar of pickles every day, you'll be able to get more work done at the cost of each bit of work taking slightly longer in order to be able to do. Let's save Blue Strike for round 76. We desperately need the extra damage on these regrow ceramics because there's going to be a bit of a chore to try and chew down. There we go. That's that casted. And... Ooh, there's a little bit of a power struggle here, but we eventually managed to get through the round. If it wasn't for both Pickles and the Glue Strike, I don't think this would have enough damage in it in order to be able to control the regrow population of the regrow balloons. But then again, we also have this grow blocker here as well, which is nice. Round 78 is definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. Oh, we're very close to call to arms. There we go, glue strike there in order to do additional damage against the ceramics. Call to arms is here, which means we now are able to use it whenever we need for that short window of being able to fire faster and deal more to me. Oh, more pierce, sorry. Uh, Pops is definitely a very generic term. I think Ninja Kiwi should have either damage or pierce definitely pierce but they need to be able to put a bit more descriptiveness with this description because pops is a very generic term what do you mean by pops uh we haven't got pickles uh, come on daughter arms no we need the pickles this regrow issue is a no no i'm gonna restart the round we definitely needed the pickles at the start of the round to control this regrow issue. The ordering of abilities are different definitely now, but it's because when you exit out of the game and when you go back into it, the order of the ability shown will be based on what towers you put down first. So in this case, I put down the glue gunners here first, and then I put down the village over here for the jungle drums, and then I put the engineer up here for the overclock, which is why the abilities are now in a different order from when I, well, the last bit of clip there. There goes round 80. Uh, sometimes I do question the logistics of these towers. 
And how well they do against your balloons sometimes. Oh, that's a very tempting button to click, but I'm not going to click it. It's going to stay like this, and you're going to see this at the victory screen for the most amount of pops gotten by a single tower throughout the game. I think now it's time to focus on more speed control. So I'm thinking of four of these balloon sabos, two over here, and then two on the right hand side of Geraldo. Simply because of the fact that then each of these, well, this might get three, but the others will only get two. Hopefully. Three shinobi bonuses. Two, three. Is it included? Oh, it does include itself. Okay, dokie. It's weird how balloon. Sorry, the shinobi tactics applies to itself, but the pop plus of the druid path does not apply to itself. So, therefore, if you want to get five stacks of a pop plus benefit, you have to put down six pop plus in order to, for all of them to get a times five benefit, which is well bizarre because. It does it for the ninjas when it comes to this, but it doesn't do it for the druid. So that's just a bit of an observation I've just realized myself. It's like, they don't apply it to themselves, but yet they rely on other towers in order for it to be applied to themselves, even though they are the same tower as those around it that are giving the benefit of it. This is proof that glue strike and relentless glue doesn't stack. This is trying to glue it. But it cannot because it's not programmed properly to, sorry, properly to do so. I can't speak properly. Even more speed to control, and I think it's a very ideal spot just so that it covers this far end most of the track, is going to one day be an absolute zero. Gone through one ZMG, now going through a second ZMG. These ZMGs kind of go down quite quickly, but it's always the backmost ones sometimes that get popped first rather than the one that the full auto rifle initially targets, because the shrapnel does more damage than the actual bullets themselves. There's no point giving the invisibility potion to the full auto rifle until we get to a point where we can do more damage to camo balloons. Like, there's just no point of it. it this is just its dummy range here, really. 89 is about to be finished. There we go. Now round 90 against these blithering DDTs. Let's put Pickles back on our sniper here. And go full auto with both our full auto and the application of our sabos. Speaking of sabos, let's slow down these as much as we can. Through strike so that the super fortified ceramics receive much more damage from both the bullet and the shrapnel that comes out of the bullet itself. If you didn't know, the shrapnel also benefits from sharpening stone. Yes, we have sharpening stone. I was just checking to see if we've got it or not. It, yeah, we do have it, so we can see the benefits of it. The unfortunate is given that these ninja monkeys will be able to target the Moabs over here and all that jazz, but there's nothing really we can do about it. Aside Snowstorm, which actually gives a benefit of freezing these balloons so that then these ninjas can't attack them. Benefits! And I have a feeling that any ZMGs or sometimes BFVs that come up here will be able to be tar Yeah, the, the, the ninjas are able to target them, but at least Geraldo's not able to target them. He will be able to do much more damage against them. Or the engineer for that matter. Uh, let's see. No! Surprisingly not, the butt end of the ZMG is not trying to get targeted by the engineer, which is nice. The only issue with this particular spot is that any balloons over here won't be targeted by the sniper, but I honestly feel like this is probably one of the best spots for it, for this challenge, to be honest. Although I think the best spot for the sniper in this particular challenge is on any of these boxes. Like, there's just no, there's no, there's no question given. Like, we're not putting it on the ground, because that means then our line of sight will be obscured by so many boxes and cars and stuff. Although Geraldo being able to hit over there is a little bit of a concern. I was hoping he would only be able to hit the ones over on this side. So maybe we should put these towers a bit more to the left. But then the engineer would then be able to hit the Moas which are on this little corner here by the best flag in the world. <laughs> in my unbiased opinion. <laughs> Uh, one day Ninja Kiwi will have a flag of every single nation in the world. 
but only the best ones are on there so far, including a banana flag of all things. Round 94 is probably the first, like, oh my gosh, look at how many balloons there are on the screen rounds, because it just felt a little bit overwhelming, but with some speed control, like with the glue gunners, the balloon sabots, the snowstorm, it will soon be at absolute zero, then you realize that each of these balloons can be divided and conquered. Don't try and pop all of them at once if you cannot do so. Target particular ones at a time and then go from there. You don't have to target these ZMGs if you don't need to, because ZMGs are the slowest types of MOABs on the field. Aside from like the Blue Narius boss balloon, but do they go at the same speed as ZMGs? I don't think so. I think they go a bit a, a lot slower than ZMGs by default. Their regular speed. Yeah, the ninjas are able to attack these, but I'm not too concerned about that. Like, yeah, this one's got times three Shinobi, which is not ideal. You see, the frontmost one's not being popped because of a shrapnel. Uh, we get into the thin wire territory now of this game. Like, the ZMGs are definitely something. Once they go far enough into a map, you're going to have to be like, yeah, I'm going to need to deal with these because they're getting too far for me to be able to report because you've also got to deal with the insides. And the insides go faster than the outside. Right, it's time for absolute zero, but unfortunately I did use the ability a little bit beforehand. But not to worry, we'll be able to deal with the rest of this round in due course. There we go, now round 95. It's a bit of a hindrance if we actually do anything. Let's just let this pop everything. Ooh, with some pickles as well, that would be brilliant. So, only apply the abilities once around stars. Obviously, overclock is a given to keep on having. Uh, I'm going to use, hmm, absolute zero, then another sabo, then call to arms, then glue strike. Uh, still a little bit worried about all these DTs. We should be able to do more damage when we're able to be up this area here. Let's use an absolute zero. It also means that these ninjas won't be able to pop any balloons which are frozen, which is one benefit to applying the absolute zero ability up here, because this is not doing any damage against them. But if we use glue strike right about now, then these ninjas will be able to damage and possibly pop the DTs. And we don't fancy that. But my question to you is, does the absolute zero take priority over the glue strike when it comes to the ninja's ability to be able to pop them? Because I think you have to be able to pop all of the types in which the DDT has in its position in order to be able to actually do any damage towards it. So you've got to be able to try and circumvent the black property, the lead property, the camo property. If you can deal with all of those, then you'll be able to damage the DDT itself. So therefore, if a balloon is frozen and deledified, the balloon itself is still frozen, which means the sharp object won't be able to pop the lead because it's also frozen. That's what I'm thinking anyway. It's got to be able to attack all times. Speaking of absolute zero, let's reapply it with... Uh, you know what? We will glue strike because I feel like we definitely need that additional damage right about now. Let's see, where are we at? Okay, apply Jerry's fire on round 98. That's a given. Now round 96. Now is the time we were able to put down the invisibility potion. Because of the small factor of being able to now do additional damage to camo balloons. And that's going to be very handy for round 99 and also round 100 for those pesky DETs. As ever, with a lot of other two mega pop scenarios, these last few rounds take a very long time. So that is why there are going to be some cuts between now and the end of the round, just because we've got all this to deal with. And the full auto rifle by itself is not that powerful. It's been multiple minutes on this same round. Are we there yet? Oh my god, it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> there is an end in sight to this round. I better not butch up this round by preemptively speaking. There we go. <laughs> oh, round 97. Excellent. Round 97 took significantly less time to complete because of the fact that there wasn't a huge amount of balloons on the screen to try and, well, pop. Uh, 
Jerry's fire, and we will soon have a glue storm in order to try and fully benefit from because we're going to desperately need that full coverage of the glue on the screen so that we can do as much damage as possible. There we go. We've got glue storm now. Now we're cooking up a storm and a half. You can actually manipulate after zero that when you have BFBs and ZMGs up here, uh, the ninjas won't be able to pop any of them because they're frozen, which is lovely. Yeah, these need to be frozen because oh, they're still able to do damage for some odd reason. I think it was simply because of the fact that the absolute zero uh, or the sniper itself was able... Oh, actually, Joe's fire more accurately was able to do pops, so therefore any balloons which have been popped from a BFB to a Moab or a ZMG to a BFB, um, they lose their frozen status, which is really odd. Again, something like Balloon Sabo, once a parent layer has been bogged, they kind of lose their effect, which is annoying. 2000, 2000, uh, like 3500, 5500. Yeah, I've caught about 7k stolen pops, which is honestly very good, honestly. But I was not expecting much worse, honestly, because of the fact that this crusher doesn't provide full coverage. It's only really a full coverage if the range of the tower itself is short, but it always depends on where you put the towers. In one of my test games, I did the most stupid thing. I put the mortar behind it, but I was like, oh crap, where am I going to put my other towers down like these ones? Before we forget, I'm going to put down some creepy idols. So that they are prepared and ready for round 100. Because we're going to need them in case DTs come along down this way and going towards the absolute zero. There's going to be absolutely zero chances of them to be able to go through. Now we can commence through to the other stages of this game. Okay, so we're going to put all of those down there. Going to put that there. Glue Storm, absolute zero. Yeah, it now affects all the DTs, which is lovely. Uh, pickles, I need to reapply for the next round. Can we do this? Of course we can. Who do you think I am? A nobody. I am a somebody. And as a somebody, I'll be able to do this. Come on, come on. Oh, I think I used Glue Storm at a bad time there because those ninjas were able to target those DDTs because of the Glue Storm being able to delay the five of them. Um, yeah, I think I should not have used the Call to Arms there, honestly. Can we go through the rest of the round? And there we go, round 100. So what are we going to do on this round? Firstly, we're going to go back here and then re-enter because I want to do the unthinkable we're going to be putting down an alchemist strongest stimulant but not just that the cursed path perishing potions yes we do more damage against mer class balloons but to be frank there is only one mer class balloon in which this will be able to target the bad so i'm not worried about that whatsoever and we have just enough money in order to initiate two rejuve potions. Obviously, we don't need them. Great. I was thinking that that was the full auto sniper. Great, now we don't have enough because I've just applied pickles to our sniper here. Isn't that just fantastic when you can't get everything down onto the field? I'll probably initiate it when we pop a bad layer, honestly. There goes the first call to arms, and we will initiate the Jerry's Fire ones of this has stopped working. I believe that is... No, not that. Reju Potion. Do that again. Put the Overclock on again. We're going to try and slow this. Well, do as much damage as we can as possible within a short space of a time as possible because we definitely need the damage. Well, we went... Okay, it's Taylor's Bandage, which is a very good sign. Although now I feel like we're going to need to kind of slow down the game and await the destruction to begin. Hopefully. Anytime now. Please. Let's just call to arms. Hopefully this is enough. There we go. And you can see why I put these down here rather than anywhere else on the map. Because it means we'll be able to chuck back as many as we possibly can. Oh yeah, we've now got enough for another Reju potion, which is lovely. 
There we go. There we go. Another one of those. Yeah, we've got this in the bag. <laughs> Another full ZMZ to try and tackle. Oh, look at this. This is a br 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 brilliant. Brilliant. Absolute zero. Thank you. But oh, some of the makers of the end. Blue Storm. Thank you for coming in to save the day. Once these mobs. Oh, they've got no chance. Two, sorry. Two million and twenty three thousand pops. Brilliant. That is a brilliant run. Honestly, I did not expect this kind of pop count with this. I was expecting like just shy over two million. But that is brilliant. I'm really liking that because I was expecting these to kind of leech away some more pops, but honestly, I think we did the correct kind of configuration here. Kind of put them to the right just a little bit more rather than just to the left, and then therefore Geraldo is not able to steal as many pops he would normally do otherwise. So that, folks, is a full auto rifle two mega pops on Scrapyard. I think the only other spots is like one of the other boxes, but I definitely wanted a room on another box for one of these villages. So I was like, perhaps these two boxes here will serve because then on one box I can have a sniper and the other box I can have a village down. Not necessary since we could put a village down here, but I kind of wanted it to be on a box as well for some odd reason. But also at the same time, it's a good spot to stop um, regrow balloons around this area for Mapia, mainly for down here, like I wasn't concerned about regrows up here. Thank you all so much, also these uh, creepy idols were very handy for the end there in order to chuck back some of those ceramics which were nearly at the end of the map. Then there's also this as well, which was our last line of defense, if any ceramics try to get over this way. Also how this cold aura has been nerfed as well, just the middle path in general recently. I don't like it when Ninja Kiwi nerfs stuff for no reason. I'm pretty sure there's a reason behind it, but it just feels like a no reason. Thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.